think our touchless watch can handle it. Yeah, no, it's a tall, it's a tall order, isn't it? This thing got absolutely trashed. I am dying to clean this thing up. I can't drive around like this. I'm gonna get this thing clean without physically touching it and we're just gonna see how close we can get. It's gonna be a tall order because this dirt's been baking on here for the last six weeks and touchless washes only really get you, you know, 90% of the way there. It's gonna be an interesting test. Now, as far as pre-rinsing goes, the question is really how much dirt and mud is caked onto the surface. Because if you can't get the soaps all the way onto the surface of the vehicle because of the mud, then you should probably pre-rinse it. Generally, I don't pre-rinse, but in this case, what I'll do is I'm gonna pre-rinse half of this thing and not the other, and we'll see what the difference is. it's starting to dry you can see that stuff that's in there and this is where the soaps come in and if we can't get it all the way off of there you know and we probably won't then i'll bust out the hand wash at that point touchless washes don't really replace hand washing you can't really get away from doing the good quality hands-on work all the touchless washes are are a shortcut in between to apply the soaps i'm playing with these little guys here I like what I'm seeing with these. Main thing I like about these little guys here is they've got the wide mouth and I think they're gonna hold up all right. And if they don't, you can buy literally like four or five of them for the same price as an MTM Hydro PF22. And I kind of liked that I could get them in blue and red. We source these straight out of China, so they're really cheap. So I'm hoping to be able to sell them for like 20 bucks on my website. I think that would be a pretty good value. And I like what I see in these things so far. All right, so let's try these out. I think these are gonna work pretty good. So I got a blue one for stars, I got a red one for stripes. And they are wide mouth. Put my sticker right on it, how cool is that? Looks good, right? This is already been mixed, ready to go. Let's top these off and rock and roll. Look at that thing, beautiful, isn't it? What I like about these foam cannons is you can actually rotate the pattern just like the PF22, so you can orient it however you like. And one thing I like better than the PF22 is th these adjustment fins close in much tighter so like you can actually spread the fan pattern out nice and wide you're kind of limited on the pf22 it doesn't really close that much all right let's go free soak goes on first pop this on here and let's rock and roll One thing though, sometimes you end up finding yourself power washing with the foamer when you go over this much mud. It's like you can't help yourself, you know? So I'll probably use a lot less of the second stuff. And I was still power washing with the foamer. Couldn't help myself, man. Ah, still use less though.
Yep, good from far, but far from good. We gotta do more. Front end came out pretty good both ways, but we still have some like staining in the paint there. It's like the mud just burned into it. It's not even coming off with my fingers, man. On the fenders, we got that weird burned in mud stains everywhere. It's not looking like I want yet. And on the other side, I think it's just a hair dirtier over here where we didn't do the pre-rinse. It definitely has a little bit more of that stain in the paint. But yeah, that stuff's really in there. It's not coming off. Over here, for some reason on both sides, I had this film that would not come off. Only right here though. The rest of it came out really nice. Like these are actually looking pretty good on the back here. Not bad for not pre-rinsing it, I'm surprised. The rubber, not bad. Certainly a lot better than it was, but when you get up real close, you're like, eh, it's not really there, you know? It's not really, the rims are looking decent, but the rubber needs more. The paint on the back came out really good. I don't know why that is, but for some reason, the tail end of this thing came out absolutely fantastic. And there's not much of a difference on the pre-rinse side on the rubber. We still have a similar amount of that stuff. I think the rims look a little better here where we pre-rinsed on this side, but not by much. But yeah, the paint is looking a whole lot better. It's certainly cleaned up a lot but same problem over here on this side where we have like that finger swipeable film left over so we at least got to see the difference between pre-rinsing and not we definitely did a little better with a pre-rinse but I think this is a little bit of an extreme situation compared to most so we got to get this thing a little bit further along we're gonna hit it with some physical contact we're gonna pop the wheels off the thing rotate the tires needs an oil change after all that driving and the inside is what I'm really looking forward to I've got to get this thing completely emptied out and then detail the inside back to where it's supposed to be. You excited to have the vehicle be nice again, Kona, or what? You don't really care about it, do you? I think Kona likes it in there a little more when it's messier. I'm okay, Kona. Get this thing clean. Yeah, Kona did a real number on this window, that's for sure. Yeah, you. Shortcut ever. Right. These stains are in here. They're not bad on this, it's a small spill. No big deal.
can't believe I spent ma the majority of my life not owning a detail brush. I've been cleaning my own stuff since I was like 12 years old, you know? Do, do you think they're just kind of, uh, they've always been kind of like a little, like a, like a trick people would use, actual just like paint brushes, but now it's an actual product? I think I thought I was not worthy, like it was only uh. for detailers. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, well, heck, I, I'm a human being. I deserve to have a good brush to clean my vehicle with. Sure you are a human being. I am definitely a human being. I've seen you drink, I don't need to be drink a detailer. water, go to the bathroom. That's what I figured, you know, I was like, why shouldn't I have a detail brush? They're like $20. I have $20, too. That was another factor. 20 bucks for something that can change your life? I think yeah, it's worth it. 20 bucks was well spent, man. That was definitely, that made all the difference. Man, let's get Kona's influence off of this window here. So rough, man. Oh. Okay, that's actually disgusting. Yeah, you can see uh, through the window again. <laughs> oh, that's on camera. You failed. You failed. Oh, oh, oh. Dude, there's so many spots in these Jeeps. Just gotta do the dust thing, you know? Normally it's a pain to get the roof on a detail. This thing, you gotta get the inside of the roof, too. There is so many surfaces in here, man. Oh. Yeah, touch that up. Alright, with the outside mostly rinsed and still needing another rinse, I think it's time for us to now switch gears to the undercarriage and get that tuned up. Because I still have one more wash to do on the outside to get all of this right. I think that if I do the undercarriage after that, it'll make another mess. So now's the right time. And look at this mess under here. This definitely needs to get handled. And the insides of these wheels are absolutely toasted. I'm excited for this part because I have some new toys for this process. The Mosmatic Hurricane Pro. I had the non-pro version before and the wheels were too small for my floor drains. So the wheels would fall into the slots in my floor drains and that one it was, it was totally a deal breaker. Because the floor drains are right in the middle of the undercarriage when you're washing it. The other one kept falling into those slots and you couldn't even get it out, it was like, you'd have to lift up on it and it's under a vehicle, so it, it didn't work. This undercarriage cleaner is really nice because it has this two gun system. This secondary gun opens up these guys here. Those are your soap nozzles. And this thing has this sort of uh, yard furniture kind of hinge thing so that you can have a nice angle to the spray. Yeah, see the... See the lawn chair uh, design there? So like, now I've got a nice steep angle. It goes all the way up to like literally just straight out. My other one was locked in the straight up position. So you didn't get any of those sideways surfaces knocked clean. So this is real nice. This thing is a great tool. It hits really hard on undercarriages and knocks things loose you didn't even think were there. So we made some modifications to this thing just because I can't help myself. This thing had two guns on it and so I had to disconnect this one, turn off the water, turn off the power washer. So I removed one gun and I put a Q connect in place so this can just plug straight in without having to change everything else around. But now I can just pop this straight on here and rock and roll makes things easier for me.
Okay, that's nice. I think we can make it look a little better. And these we can certainly make look better. We use the heavy duty. Got it in here at about 10 to 1. That's usually how I roll. That is more than enough for today, but I still need to come back to the surface and fix up all these weird stains. And we got a lot more of them now too, because doing the undercarriage, man, that just blasts stuff everywhere. We thought it was dirty after the touchless wash. Let me tell you something. We got a little bit of tuning up to do just the fine detail work now that we're finished making a mess. We're getting onto the home stretch here. I still have to hit inside the bed here too. This is still looking pretty rough in there. So we'll blast that out in the morning, get the outside detailed real nice. And then we'll just start outfitting a few more features onto this thing. All right, it is a brand new day and we're ready to get this thing looking nice. Nice. We got a whole bunch of new junk on the surface of this paint from the undercarriage wash that we got to handle. And we got all kinds of mud stains to take care of. And the classic places where things get stuck on Jeeps. We got to get those rocks out of there. So the good old hands on approach, it's the only way. One of my buddies, Extreme Detailing Kyle over on TikTok, just started working for Auto Fiber. And he reached out to me and he was like, hey, we have some pretty cool stuff we should you know, send your way and you should try it. And I was like, all right, cool. And then I went on his website and bought everything. This is some of the stuff that Kyle thought I would like. These are little things for this thing here. It's called a barrel blade. I'll pop that open. I got some of these giant drying cloths called dreadnoughts. And the most exciting thing, they got the mitt on a stick. I've been using these things, uh, which I got for like, 12 cents off Amazon and they kind of feel like it. You know, I mean, these poles are really flimsy. So I'm pretty pumped to get these brand new mitt sticks in. Let's pop these open and see what they're all about. These are the poles that stick together. This is the end and you got the mitt. What is this? Oh, some kind of reinforcement pad for the mitt. Ah, this thing is sturdy. Oh, that's nice. Change your working angle and then lock it in. Ah, oh, this is great. Oh yeah. This is gonna be way sturdier than uh, what I'm used to. And the whole thing is covered in foam so that when I bang it up against the paint, it won't matter. And the last section is kind of at an angle. Oh my God, that is so sturdy. So on the end here, there's this little clip. This little pin holds things centered apparently. That'll go through this little hole once this is in place. Oh yeah. And then this collar tightens down. Oh, I like this. This is as sturdy as a thing I've ever seen in my life. Cause brush is a bad word, you know, you want to use a mitt. So the mitts are so close range and then now you've got some length. This thing is so long. Put the mitt on there. It's a noodle cover. 1500 GSM 8020 blend Chanel microfiber refill. I think I want the pointy ends out toward the corners so that I can get some leverage. Oh man, this is nice. Oh yeah. We got a mitt on a stick. This thing. 
Yeah, they call this the dreadnought drying towel. This thing is pretty substantial. Might dry myself with this thing. And then we got the barrel blade. I thought this would be useful. Auto fiber makes some nice stuff, I'll tell you what. Oh yeah, same nice snaps inside of this thing. And this must be the hole where you put your snaps through. It's bendable. That's pretty cool. Nice material, man. I can tell I'm gonna have this thing for a long time. Oh, that's nice. This is like a dagger. What do you think, Kona? You want one? You do want You want one, don't you? All right, I found a home for the dreadnought drying towels right here. Fits in pretty good, pretty good. Where to put the barrel blade. I mean, I've got my wheel cleaning stuff right in here, but man, this is too nice for wheels. I think this is more of a detail, small, weird Jeep places on the paint kind of thing. So I'm gonna put this with my mitts. It's gonna go right there. Very nice. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. All right, let's get the mud stains off this paint. The bane of all Jeep owners' existences, bro. Probably shouldn't be using a steel screwdriver for this. But there is rocks in my paint right now. One might ask, why would Jeep design it this way? So I just finished up washing this whole thing down and I had a really interesting uh, realization side by side here. So I used heavy duty at 100 to one through this applicator on the whole Jeep. And there was a couple spots that didn't really get it done as far as those mud stains were concerned. That's where I busted out the 10 to one strength in my IK sprayer. I used that on the wheels, the, the tires, and some spots on the fenders. And I noticed that the fenders weren't sheeting water anymore, but the rest of the Jeep was. And so I did another test spot right here at 10 to one with heavy duty. And what's interesting is you can see snake oil on the driver's door here and where I used heavy duty at 10 to one, I was able to remove it. I just thought that was interesting because that means that you can use heavy duty at 100 to one as a normal wash. It'll go on real nice, foam up real good, do a lot of heavy lifting. But if you need to, if you wanted to for any reason, sometimes you might want to like remove a coating or like, you know, strip the, the surface so you can reapply something else. And so heavy duty at 10 to one got the job done. Check out how this thing sheets water though. So yeah, you can see how the water is just staying put on this back door here and on the front, it's already gone. It's just nice to see that because it means that the snake oil is still on there from about three months ago when I last put it on and then it survived that whole trip. So it also survived the touchless wash and heavy duty at 100 to one. It took 10 to one to get it off of there. So we've done everything we can for the paint on a soap level, but what we're gonna do next is buff the paint out because there's still some spots where the mud had just completely burned in. We can't get it out with soap. So I've got the compound ready and we're gonna try our hand at buffing. Most of the staining is gone, but there's still some stuff in there that's just not going away. Not a big deal anyway though, because there's a bunch of spots that are pretty scratched up 
This is where Kona gets in and out and she has dented the heck out of this panel. I have a plan for this area. We'll get, a, we'll get this straight later, but the first thing is to get these scratches out. So we got this stuff from Obsessed Garage. It's Sonax, uh, perfect finish, four, six. No idea what that means. We got a fine polishing pad, high performance, ultra fine polishing pad, coarse polishing pad. We got a medium polishing pad. First thing we got to do though is clay bar the paint because like we can't really, you don't want to, you don't want to be buffing any of this like slight contamination that might be in there. So I got this, this is a clay mitt. I got this from Adams. It's pretty nice. This right here is a clay bar lubricant. I have some actual clay bar material as well, which might be better, but this kind of covers more area. Keep in mind, we don't know what we're doing. Any input is welcome, honestly. I'm gonna try a normal clay bar too and just see if I can see any difference. You wanna rub it around on the surface until it doesn't have any resistance on it. All right, man, we got a nice fresh clay bar right here. Oh wow, that's doing a lot better. Than the glove? Yeah, yeah, there was a couple pieces of like iron baked into the paint. And you don't want those to get embedded in your buffing wheel and then go everywhere. You know what I mean? It'll ruin it. It'll make it worse off than it Yeah, it would make it worse. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to go backwards, man. What you do with your clay bar is you fold it. And uh, as you do that, it just kind of buries all the contaminants in and you get a fresh layer. Even with the clay bar though, I can still see the mud stain in the paint. That is looking clean to me. Yeah, look at all those scratches. Yeah, that's what we're gonna take care of with the buffer. All right, this thing looks like it's pretty much ready for the buffing wheel now, man. I think so too. Get that random orbital out, get this thing looking proper. All right, Milwaukee's coming in to save the day. Is it Ru Roops or Rupaz? I think it's Rupaz, do you know? Um, I think so. Mm -hmm. All right. about three dots on this. Three? It depends on how much you're gonna do. These are the worst scratches right here, so seeing mill what we got here. 8.45. Three dots, you said? I do three nice sized dots. The three nice sized dots. And then, How's that? And then yep. you dab it around on the surface. Oh, Bob, you know what to do. Come on. I would not except, say that I know. Except that you lost a good amount of it on the. Oh, dude. All right, well, we've got more. Let's try this again. This is probably way too much. Oh, I, yeah, it is way too much. Yeah. Maybe we can spread it out a little bit. See if we can relocate a little bit of this stuff. Dude, this is embarrassing. I don't know what I'm doing. Stuff's gonna get all in the trim. So I'm gonna slow this down a little bit. I don't know, 3,300, what do you think? Too fast? I have no idea. All right, let's find out. Not a lot of pressure, here we go. need the heavier cutting pad. What those need is, um, they need a heavier cutting polish. Because mm. that's a finished polish. Yeah. We need like a cleaner for these pads. Like a thing you can ram it up against and clean it. Try a, a finer pad. Four small dots. Four small dots. Yeah, because it's it's um gonna soak in a lot more than the wool one. How 
am I doing, bro? That looks really good. Yeah, so this is brandy new, ultra fine. We gotta wipe it off and see. I oh, that is much better. I didn't get the scratches out, like the deep ones. I think I need the heavier cut for that. What are we getting? 8.28. It's also counting the paint itself in there, right? Not just the clear Um, coat. It's the whole thickness. Um, to, to the steel? Yeah, yeah, to bare metal. I mean, we got the mud stains out though. I don't see any, do you? I don't see anything. Is this your first time or second? Uh, I did this once before on Kayla's car when Kona tried to get in through the window even though it was only four inches cracked open. <laughs> and she messed up the paint. Oh my god. It looked like she had been attacked by a bear. I can't believe that. I got it all out of there, but it took me all day. <laughs> it was not easy. But it was great practice because I couldn't, I literally couldn't make it any worse with my, my lack of, uh, you know, my lack of skills and so uh it was good practice and it actually turned out really good i think that the random orbital polishers are a lot more forgiving than the buffing wheels 100 that's, that's where you get the swirling and all that junk the randoms are pretty much you know it's very difficult to mess it up i think so the you know, you're not putting a lot of pressure down, you're just trying not to ride the ridges. So I spent the whole day on this thing buffing the paint yesterday and I drove it home and it got rained all over the thing. Doesn't really matter though because I didn't get it quite to perfect. It still had the compound stuck into all the seams, you know. So we need to wash that off and then we'll hit it with the snake oil. The snake oil is going to be nice because that's going to take it to a whole nice level of protection. And I do have a ton of protection now in the paint. The paint's looking real good. It's beading like crazy but the underneath needs to be coated. And I figured, well, heck, while I'm at it, I'll just do the whole thing. So let's get this thing looking just right. All right, now we're hooked up to snake oil. Humid today, man. We're making it more humid too. Rinse position.
Hi, we're in a place where I think this thing might be actually 100% clean. I mean, we have hit this thing hard, man. Now, you may think that I had enough stuff in my Jeep here, but I in fact need more things. So the Jeep may be clean, but it's now time to put it back together again and do some upgrades. And this box here has my rocker panel guards in it. And that's my solution for the drama and the dents that little uh, Kona created over here. You didn't even leave me a note when you did that. These are just for you, Kona. And I think that I'm gonna like them as well. They're gonna look pretty sharp. Oh no, I think it got tweaked a little bit. Ugh, dang it, isn't that the way it always goes? Hopefully my Jeep is bent like that too. Pretty slim odds though, we'll find out. Jeep definitely isn't bent like that. But I was able to bend it back pretty easily. How did one of them get bent and not the other? I mean, I guess that's good news. All for you, Kona. Yeah, we're definitely gonna need to take off that existing guard thing. I assume that this is full of the good stuff. Oh yeah. I have a feeling this is gonna be a two-man operation. And you know what these mean. It's gonna hurt me more than it's gonna hurt you. First thing we gotta do is we gotta go underneath. Oh, this isn't bad at all. Four bolts, no big deal. Wait, it's pretty clean under here. Clean it now, and we'll be able to get under here again. I have a feeling this process involves a sharpie. I am going to regret this. <laughs> it came with this little uh, tool, but I have a real one. Not that it makes me feel any better. take off this water one and we're going with double fuel because just having two gallons man that's like 30 miles of range with one of these jeeps so we needed more now we got like 60 miles of range it's not much but it's better than it was these are little roll bar bags for above the seat just to keep things in sunglasses maybe i don't know this is a little thing that you stick to the lid of the center console for small items. 
This box is full of these things. I grabbed a bunch of Sidio crates. We got the liquid Molly for the oil change. Couple new camping chairs that are bla uh, black and gray and orange, cause you know, levelers, wheel chocks, you know, just in case you're on uneven ground, those are gonna be useful. Got an orange and black tool roll, cause my tool bag is getting a little tired. This is a Sherpa 110 volt electric blanket. Oh, and this is the center console organizer divider thing. Gotta have center console organization, gotta have it. Oh. This is my new shovel. And these must be the mounts for the shovel. I also grabbed a different grill cause um, the one I had didn't have the little igniter button. The Coleman grill that I got, which was this one right here, it only goes full afterburner. There's no like finesse. So you're like trying to cook rice or something. You're just like burning the heck out of it. So I, I'm gonna try out this Kuma outdoor one. Plus it was gray and orange and black. So, I mean, I'm going for a theme here. So I gotta, I gotta hold on to that. Let's get these things in place. Maybe, maybe. Where shall it live? Is this the home for this thing? You know, I don't know. Yeah. Let's put some of this stuff in the center console area. Oh, there's nothing worse than stuff that doesn't peel off properly. Ah, I will get all of it. I like that you can pull it out too so that you can organize it with little things. And under here, that's where this one comes into play. It's like a little um, set of dividers. This was a highly critical area during our trip. Like we needed like this is really useful. This center console is like pivotal, you know. Ah. Yeah. That's nice. Storage capacity, man. Storage capacity. I've been rolling around with this, this snap-on bag for a long time. Infrared measuring tape. and black shovel man. Ah. Hey. Really nice shovel man. So I have two things to mount on the back of that table on the molly plate. I got my hatchet and this shovel here. So I got two of these clamp things to mount. From what I understand, these are universal. See how universal they are. Yeah, how nice is that? I got a little spot for my locks on there too. So I have three things to mount on this molly plate here. I got this waterproof bag for my winching controls, and then I've also got the shovel and the hatchet. The question is, how do they orient, you know? I also like to keep my trash bag thing there. This will just be winch gear in here. Kind of a recovery area here, that's what's going on. I don't know. Yeah. All right, I got the mounts in place. Yeah, trash can. Really need to find this in orange, man.
Hi. Good. Yeah, this thing is a toiletries bag. Pretty useful. It's like a tactical, tactical toiletries bag. Toiletries loaded up. Got you a fresh bed? Yeah, it's a good spot. This was a nice feature. This thing allowed us to pull from streams and make drinking water. This is like an off-grid water filter system. I think uh, it's normally used on like RVs and stuff like that. So I had my water pump here. I had this pulling from a five gallon pail and uh, this was the suction tube. So the pail was on the slider here and it was uh, kind of in the way, you know? I didn't really like that this hose was going back and forth with the drawer. I realized I really didn't need to get at this very much, actually at all. And I need to use this area for a new pail. So I got a, a actual pail for drinking water. It's probably a little more like drinking water friendly on a microplastics level. And my goal is to mount it up against the inside here and then free up that space on the bed here. So I just have to modify this cap so that it can receive my my tube here. This has got a three quarter thread on it and this, this lid actually has a three quarter thread on it on the inside. So these come with this goofy little valve that everybody seems to hate because it always ends up pointing the wrong direction when you tighten it, I guess. I'm gonna drill out this cap and put this, this straw onto the top of this thing. This will look kind of like that. We'll streamline that much further, you know. So all I gotta do is move this forward a little bit. Doesn't really need to be as accessible as it is. This thing's looking pretty nice, but I totally forgot to clean the engine compartment. I should have done that earlier, but it won't be a big deal. I don't think it'll make a mess on the rest of the thing. Oh man. Yeah, we got stuff to clean in here everywhere. Yeah, it ain't pretty in here yet. All this junk's gonna get on the outside, man. Steam is the answer. All right, I got the heavy duty in here, cut like 10 to one roughly, and we're just gonna get it nice. Alright, engine's looking pretty good. Minimal damage to the fenders. I just hit some awesome sauce up on here. There's a little splatter from all that dirt in there. But uh, we're looking 100% now. now. The engine doesn't really need to be cleaned like that, I don't think. I mean, it's kind of more just for me, just because uh, 
you know, I like the way it looks when it's clean. It's not like you can really get everything in there, you know, it's just not accessible. You could power wash into there and reach a little further with some soaps, but I mean, there is a lot of electronics in there. I've never had any issues, but I definitely think there's potential for them, you know? So the steamer is minimal as far as moisture goes. So I like using that on the engine. It's just kind of a nice, easy way to get everything looking pretty nice. It's looking pretty good. We're back in business here. vacuum for this I think so it's just like a big bucket yeah just you're just pushing everything. it everywhere it's literally just sp spreading around grab the Dyson the Dyson yeah I can do that yeah that's the tool right there. here you get it oh man that's so good Yeah. 